Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. It is the final show of the week. When he news, we had Joe Rogan in the news because he had CNN's medical expert Sanjay Gupta nice on his years. podcast. Right, and here's what I'll say. I've been very critical of Joe Rogan when he spreads vaccine misinformation or he gets things wrong and thus promotes vaccine hesitancy. But also I've been very critical of and I think it's fucked up and stupid the way that CNN handled it when he actually well, got then. COVID. Saying that Rogan was taking a livestock drug, a horse dewormer. Doing something that for the sake of lawyers will say uh, was them assuming or just outright lying. When in fact, yes, there is a horse dewormer version of ivermectin that a number of people were taking. And also there is the human house. version, which a lot of experts have said does not help when it comes to COVID. All they had to say was that Joe Rogan took a drug that the FDA has issued warnings about, saying that it is not approved to prevent or treat the virus. But they went the route that they did, and that yeah. brings us to today, because the, the clip that's getting the most traction, the most attention right now, is Joe Rogan calling out CNN and asking for Sanjay Gupta to respond. They lied what and they said say? I was taking horse dewormer. First of all, it was prescribed to me by a doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. along they with shouldn't have said a it was bunch worse. of if, other if medications. Was, if you got a human pill, because there were people that were taking it, the veterinary medication, and I, you're not, obviously. You got it from a doctor, so that it shouldn't be called that. Ivermectin can be a very effective medication for parasitic disease. Mm -hmm. Can I just come back to the one? I want to talk about I, two, no, no, two, no, no, two no, things no. on you the ledger. To, you have, before we get to that, does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. Right, so unfortunately for Sanjay, he seems in no way prepared to answer that question, which is kind of surprising because you have to know that it's coming. Rogan not letting him run away from it, metaphorically letting those hands fly. But what I would also say, and I, I don't know how many people are actually gonna do it because everyone kind of just consumes everything in clips, I'd actually recommend listening to this full podcast. But if you listen to the whole thing, it's actually a pretty great conversation, even though I, I know everyone just kind of at this point kind of like hears what they want to hear. Everyone's got their lines drawn in the sand. Right, but I thought it was great where, you, where you're having a conversation where Rogan's bringing up things like an extremely rare heart condition. That I want to, but unfortunately we can't do it on the fucking stream. That can happen as an adverse vaccine reaction in kids. But Gupta pointing out in the conversation that kids who get COVID are far more likely to have that happen to them. So if you get vax, it actually reduces the risk. And, but then you've also got to look at what is, as you point out, the risk of getting myocarditis with the disease COVID, as opposed to the vaccine. And it was higher. It was with higher. With children. With children. This, this really? These studies were in children. And it was about 16 times higher. Now, keep in mind, 16 times higher sounds like a lot, but we're still talking about five out of a million versus now maybe just under 100 out of a million. So it's still really rare. Now, the one thing I will say about the vaccinated patients who got myocarditis is that they they were all treated you also have him and rogan talking about what it is to have covid and then like quote be fine noting that it's not just about if you're going to the hospital or not you, you get teenagers who who will have these long covid naps you get you get what does that mean they just they're tired all the time they get these sort of long hauler type symptoms mm -hmm. you know less so in kids but you know when you talk about 33 percent of people having persistent symptoms at last months i just feel like we define like, I think we're allowed to have a nuanced conversation about this. Right, with them adding that this disease and its impact should be measured in more than just life and death, right? Will it kill you? Will you live? As well as talking. By the way, I didn't watch the rest of that video, but the chatter who clipped that, I thought they were trolling me. Okay, that's why I'm pissed off. I don't know. If you did it on accident, then that's one thing. Talking about, you know, people recommending or not recommending certain people get vaccinated, right? Natural immunity versus vaccination. So for you, Joe Rogan. Yes. I would say you've had it. Yes. So now get one shot of the vaccine. No. Why not? Because I have better immunity than I would if I was vaccinated. Oh, we've seen health officials. That's not true. That's not true. That's literally not true. Nice dear Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Joe Rogan debate and respectfully disagree about multiple topics. I spent a fair bit of time discussing our preprint on post-vaccination myocarditis and boys. I want to clarify a few things. First, Joe does say it does say it correctly once, but our study compared the risk we identified via VARES. Oh my God! VARES of post-vaccination myocarditis to the risk of hospitalization over the next four months and not overall from COVID-19. We did find that even at a time of high disease prevalence, dude, they used VARES, dude. We did that even at times of high disease prevalence the boys 12 to 17 without medical comorbidities were more likely to have post-vax myocarditis after two doses.
Isn't she the person from that study you pulled up? Yes. Can you explain why that isn't true? My ecology professor has been telling our class the same thing about people who fight off the infection naturally have similar, if not higher immunity than vaccinated people. It's not true. There was one study that suggested that it could be true. But the reason why it's not fucking true is because the likelihood that your body develops a natural uh, immunity response is at like 30%. Also, your professor is an ecology professor who gives a shit. Okay. The likelihood that your body will build enough defenses is like around 30%. So a lot of people don't even develop a natural uh, response. And that immunity isn't for a long enough time. Isn't the same as like the vaccine. The vaccine is around like six months. There are so many unknowns. And as far as VAERS goes, okay... Bears is bullshit. It's a self-reported system. You could literally, I could right now be like, I died of COVID. And that data will sit there. Okay. When, when there's medical professionals write into it as well, but normal regular homies can write into it as well. Like your ecology teacher could write into that and be like, I'm dead now. <laughs> okay. I got the vaccine boo-boo and it killed me. Now, how can it be used for studies? Well, the way it should be used for studies is if there's like a massive peak in some kind of fucking symptom that uh, we had previously not seen, okay, then that triggers a fucking red flag and it gets scientists, not fucking this scientist though, uh, not this epidemiologist, I guess, other epidemiologists to be like, okay, we need to conduct additional tests on this matter. And if it's like a serious enough fucking response to even take extra measures and make the FDA even halt the distribution of said vaccine it already happened it happened with johnson and johnson and it happened with astrazeneca both of which are now back in distribution that's how this works okay it is correct that the hospitalization rate we identified in, in, in those with myocarditis was around 84 percent israel found that 81 percent of hospitalization rate among their myocarditis cases most cases mild but one death we did find that even at times of high disease prevalence, the boys 12 to 17 without medical comorbidities were more likely to have post vax Okay. What was not discussed on the show was the other reports finding higher rates of myocarditis in this demographic than we found, for example, Israel and Ontario. Huh. In Ontario, Canada has, is reporting the highest rates for 12 to 17 year old males. So our studies post vax myo rates in boys after two doses are well in line with other studies. In fact, our, in fact, our rates were lower. The above studies were a Pfizer, but Moderna seems to have a rate of post-vax myocarditis in young men. The question of the rate of COVID myocarditis in this age group is a good one. Unfortunately, we don't have good data yet. We have good data on asymptomatic and symptomatic COVID-related myocarditis in college-age men, but not boys due to the inappropriate denominator. <laughs> Please, more discussions like this. I think every one of us wants to work together to minimize harm and do the right thing to our kids. In the revision of our preprint, we are taking into consideration one, overall infection hospitalization rate, two, the benefits of one dose uh, of the vaccine, and three, a natural history of infection, history of natural infection. Yaja, nine month. Twitter is not a credible source of information. Dude, this person is literally the one who wrote the fucking study. I mean, this is like one step below a primary source. We are going to the primary source of the primary source. There's literally nothing more credible than like doing that. 
moon to spin. Oh, Joe Rogan responded on Instagram to the live tweets of the video IG live. Thanks, man. Stop doing that. It's not funny. It, like, sending me a Rick Astley uh, link like you're fucking 38 years old, dude. Like... Yes, it was a preprint article. It still is a preprint article. It has not been peer reviewed yet. Officials refute Rogan's claim saying the vaccine is the better and more effective option. But ultimately where I'll end this is I'm, I am genuinely surprised that Sanjay Gupta went on the podcast. I'm not saying it's a good idea or a bad idea. Sanjay is saying that he went on despite his friends saying don't do it. And even Sanjay in a piece that he wrote after the podcast, he seems somewhat conflicted. Writing, I, I guess a small part of me thought I might change Joe Rogan's mind about vaccines. After this last exchange, I realized it was probably futile. His mind was made up and there would always be plenty of misinformation out there neatly packaged to support his convictions. Truth is though, I am still glad I did it. My three hour long conversation wasn't just with Rogan. If just a few of his listeners were convinced it will have been well worth it. But I don't know how true that is. I don't know how many people can appreciate new one. Bro. Ninety nine point three percent of people who died in COVID in September weren't vaccinated. I mean. Let's look at that. I mean, that data tracks with the rest of the data. <laughs> nope, still. Yeah, more than 99% of recent COVID deaths in the U.S. involve unvaccinated people. So, here's another fun fact. Are you guys ready for this? Between the age group 35 to 55, 34 to 55. Yo, check this out. COVID has officially passed heart disease and cancer for the number one murderer for the past two months. So for motherfuckers who are like, nah, dude, this shit's like just for the birds. It's for old people. Um, you know, fun fact. Number one murderer of 35 to 55 year olds in the United States of America currently for the past two months is COVID. That's right. Yeah. Bullshit. 20%, 22% of deaths in Poland were vaccinated people. I literally don't know if that's true or not, but the likelihood that like, uh, you know, 22% of Polish people that were vaccinated died is hilarious. Like that's just not real. There's no shot. Or maybe it's just like anti-Polish, the vaccine. Ones, or that both parties in something can be wrong about different things and just saying that doesn't mean that they're equally wrong. They can be wrong in different ways, more meaningfully or not. But also, does that mean we stop trying to have conversations? Because then it's just game over, but maybe it is game over. But with all of that said and understanding that this is from a three hour podcast where we, we're not covering everything, what are your thoughts with this story? And it could be on, there's a number of aspects to, to sink your- Even if it's 22% of the 78 were unvaccinated. So that's what this chatter, so what does that chatter even think that means? Oh, Chatter was just lying. Oh, he was lying by just like uh, fucking. I, I mean, he's Polish, so obviously he doesn't know how to do math. So that's probably why that happened. It's fine. You know? He saw two and he thought that's the same as 22. So. Dumbass. There's no evidence that any of the vaccines, including COVID-19 vaccines, cause fertility problems in men or women. No, I never said that. I just said that it has the likelihood of changing your fucking period. Wait, shut the fuck up. Are you serious? It's lower now? Only 0.1% of vaccinated people die of COVID health ministry reports. Okay, we gotta, uh, we gotta ban him. I have to. I'm sorry. Can someone, can, what was the dude's name? Uh, 
Oh, it's a different statistic. Sorry. Oh, never mind. Vaccinated people constituted 1.9% of all deaths. Yeah, that's even lower, though. It's not as low. It's a different stat. I misread it. Still lower, though. It's at 1.9%. It got lower. What's his name? No, I know we're looking at you, uh, uh, Poland stats now. Because a person who was like, in Poland, 22% of death from COVID is vaccinated people. So I looked at it, and turns out it's just completely a fucking lie. Like, he just straight up came in here and was like, Ha! Puska Grom! You don't know any better! My source was literally the Confederacia party. Dude, look at the duality of chat. Terrible Polish accent, but carry on. Solid Polish accent, to be honest. My source was the Confederacia party. Please also stop being racist. Like, what the fuck? Wait, is this like the fucking conservative party or something? Like, is he? If this is like the fucking transphobic party and this dumb motherfucker is literally being like, please don't be racist. Because I uh, said. Oh my God. Why are you like this? Why are you like this? moment yo how are you gonna be a nazi when hitler literally didn't think you were a human dude like what are you doing like hitler literally did not think you were a human and you're still like no it's pretty good hitler that guy good ideas i'm still white you say i'm slav i'm different but you know how, dude? Hassle, 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 hassle. Sorry for my Nazi juicers. <laughs> Excuse CL. Stop being racist to me. Like, what the fuck? Also. My source was the far-right Polish party. Dude, the far-right Polish party is like the far-right party in Nazi Germany at that point, dude. What party in fucking Poland isn't far-right? He fucking left? No, I banned him. I banned his bitch ass before he, like, started writing slurs in the chat. Polish neo-Nazis actually argue that Hitler wasn't pro-white enough because he didn't consider Slavs to be as good as Aryans. You know that the far-right Polish party is rising, right? It's ironic. No, I, I do. I just, like, find it really fucking weird that, like, you could be impacted by uh, the fucking Nazis. Wait, the party ideologies for the fucking Polish uh, chatters party. Right-wing populism, economic liberalism, anti-communism, anti-immigration, anti-Islam, hard Euroscepticism, internal factions we have, ultra-nationalism, paleo-libertarianism, paleo-conservatism, monarchism. Monarchism?
anti-Zionism, reactionism, reactionism, agrarianism, political Catholicism, Christian nationalism, anarcho-capitalism. This is why I stay out of Polish people's business, okay? They seem likely that you hang out if they were a party. <laughs> it literally got clapped by the time you put it on, dude. God damn, they were quick. Yep. Minarchy means minimal government. It's like a kind of libertarianism. Here's that death of a pet side effect from Vares I mentioned yesterday. Yeah, also, death of a relative. Yeah. Hassle. Dude, being a fucking Polish monarch, monarchist is so funny. Pogo. But what's even funnier is that, like, the racist Polish dude was like, why are you being racist towards... Uh, why are you being racist right now? What the fuck? You're being so racist against me, a Polish Nazi. Love you. <laughs> oh, the most sensitive people on the planet. Sorry. It's the truth. And you know it. When I shit on Turkish people, they're like... They're like, I, I kill your seven generations, blah, blah, blah. When I shit on Brazilian people, they're like, uh, you're kind of right, but also like, fuck you. I, I, I kill your seven generations. When I shit on Polish people, they're like, why would you do that? We are the most oppressed people on the planet. Literally, no one has ever been as oppressed as the Polish man. We get, we are the butt of every joke. We are the most oppressed. How dare you fucking do this? I'm literally pissing, shitting, farting, and crying right now. What the fuck? Months, Nothing has ever been... As devastating as hearing about, uh, you know, uh, someone say that uh, I was stupid. Like, literally, they just, like, when you make fun of, when you make fun of fucking Polish people, like, they, they just start crying. Non-stop. The only racism they cannot tolerate is racism against the Polish. It, that's also true. One time I said, Poland is, like, overrated. It's just all white people, and it's, like, overrated as shit. I don't know why the fuck. White nationalist Stefan Molnier made it seem like it was so dope. And like, people got so mad at me. There were like community members in here that were like, how the fuck, how dare you say that? We have been victims to both communism. We have been victim to both Nazism and communism. How dare you say that? Well, what Polak has hurt you and what did he do to you? It, literally nothing. I have no inter I've never been to Chicago. I have no interaction with Polish people. I've literally never... I don't think I've ever interacted with a Polish person. Poland is dope because they used the billions they got from the EU to build beautiful places. Confederacja is a party made of all the craziest people that couldn't get into the government on their own. That's why they have a monarchist guy, but also crazy lives. My Ecuadorian friend told me their president closed all the banks and then changed their currency to the USD. Then he fled the country and now is a professor at Harvard. Oh my, God, my whiskers. What? Oh shit, Rafflegator is Polish. That's right. Yeah, but Raffle Gator is also funny, so he doesn't give a shit. Also, American Polish people don't care. They, like, they joke about it. I think Polish people from Poland care. They get, like, really fucking mad. They get really mad and really sad when you make fun of them. 
your teeth into. I'd really love to know. Also, in news regarding the vaccine, especially for those of you that are like, I got my vaccination, what's all this about boosters? Do I need one? Is it just for the ultra vulnerable? Do I need to get the same exact one or can I switch over? Right, wondering if I got the J and J shot, can I do the hokey pokey with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine? And now, thanks to some preliminary data from the National Institutes of Health, we kind of have an answer, which is always a great thing to say, Kind of. Because keep in mind, none of this has actually been peer-reviewed yet, so things could change. But for now, the evidence and data here seems to suggest that people who received the J&J shot will experience stronger antibody levels after getting boosters of either Pfizer or Moderna. But the data also reportedly suggesting that people who originally got Pfizer or Moderna will see a similarly strong response after getting a booster from either. And overall, seeming to showcase that the mixing of these vaccines is also safe. But like I said, we're not quite there yet. Up to this point, only the Pfizer vaccine has been approved by the FDA as an actual booster, and even then, only among certain populations. Which actually, on that note, the FDA spent today reviewing and ultimately approving Moderna's booster again, though only for certain populations. And tomorrow they'll look into the same question for J&J, &J, with them also reportedly considering the idea of mixing vaccines, though here they're not actually scheduled to make any official recommendation just yet. So it's gonna be very interesting to watch, and at least in the United States, this is kind of the, I feel like, a turning of a chapter. A lot of the focus is now gonna be on booster shots as well as shots for kids. Which, actually regarding the former, the number of people getting boosters here in the United States has now officially surpassed the number of people getting their first doses. But from that, I wanna take a second to thank the fantastic sponsor,